Okay, here it is in the box. There's the box closed. Open. So it looks like outside the box. These swing out and open up. About five inch diameter. Big enough to easily securely hold the MRS skillet. Or that's their second largest pot here. And there's leftover. Could easily hold the biggest one. Easily. Pretty sturdy. Okay, we got some cod, scallops, two large potatoes, lemon, some salt, two MRS skillets. Underneath there we have the depower stove. And these are their new stoves. There'll be a link underneath. Some Louisiana batter. Uh, this is the Case Hobo knife. There's a fork also, spoon. MRS Seagull pot. These are pretty nice. They're almost indestructible. You can put everything inside. Close it up. You can set these right in the fire. These are almost indestructible. Here with Charlie, up at Laguna Lake in Fullerton. Oh. What's that you're making there, Charlie? We make some corn fritters. We make some corn fritters. Uh, That's like an apple fritter, right? Is, are they sweet? Uh, not a little bit. Not real sweet. Like, like a like dessert? An apple fritter? No. No, it's like it's like having your starch. Okay. So they're like pancake batter, with corn in it, a little bit of sugar. And you'll like it. It's pretty tasty, actually. Got some cod over here. Got some wedge cut steak fries. Okay, it was just a fluke, I guess, that that stove didn't work at Silverwood. Look at Charlie, they're both working great. Yeah, I can hear it. They're like jet motors, look at that. Here's how I watch. That puts up some heat. I don't know, I might have had some sand in the fuel line up there. You think so? Something was in it. Yeah, because, I mean, I it couldn't put day. out any, any power at all. More scallops. Scallops. Cod. Fries. Some more fries in there. So it worked excellent. Doesn't even look like you used any fuel either. Great on fuel, I mean. Feel that, Charlie. It doesn't feel like anything was even used. That might be a winner. Yeah, so the stove seemed to work great. The windscreen. There's a slight breeze, but nothing big. Working awesome though. So, stove, thumbs up. And as for the chair, customer service sent you out another one, right? Saturday, it broke Saturday. By Monday morning, or Monday afternoon, by one o'clock in the afternoon, I had a new chair on my doorstep. So they stand Down behind here. their product. Still haven't tried it out yet, but I brought it to, I, I will be trying it out. Well, later. Jason Huckaba and uh, a bunch of other people have tried them out and they've not had that problem, so it might have been that one chair. I tried his out too. That's why I said it was comfortable. Everybody's sitting that's there in that camp. It. Yeah, I know. So that's for the cod. How is it? It's great. Great seasoning on the, on the fish. Scallops are delicious. Fries done to perfection. Can't beat it. Cod is good. Try scallop. They're a heck of a good cook. Only thing Man, missing those are the, good. Only thing missing is a waiter. Those scallops are good. Yeah. And the topless waitress is missing too. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she'll come later. 
We got some wildlife over here waiting to clean up when we're done. Rats with wings. So one's back in the box. Here's the other one. These fuels, I'm not going to be able to hear, but listen. If they're near empty, you hear the swishing. They feel like they are right there. They barely used any at all. It's frying two potatoes with that pan. And then uh, frying the fish and scallops with the other one. Probably about... 20 minutes cook time total. I feel like they're full. So, uh, it must have just been a fluke that it didn't work that first time. There must have been something in the fuel line, something pinched, because no matter how much I would turn it up, I couldn't hear the ch. But the same fuel did work with my. What stole did I use it on? The Snow Peak uh, tri light, it did work with the Snow Peak tri light. So maybe unscrewing it, I cleared the line, I'm not sure. Just a fluke. Okay, this is the Audad chair I showed you previously. It comes packed in this pack. This is when it comes out. Show them how it works, Charlie. Kind of just give it a shake and it'll. Basically, it. They all pop into place. They all pop in together. A whole bunch of thinking. There you go. Just like that. The bottom one. Oh, that one's. There it is. There's your chair. And then these just place right over the things here. Plate. See if I'm well seated in. There we go. How is it? It's comfortable, just like Jason's. The reason I bought it. Very comfortable. Yeah, that other one must have just been a fluke. Something, just one of those flaws. This one's working pretty good. So far, so good. Very comfortable. How easy? It's very easy to get up. So it's a nice chair. Under two pounds. A little over a pound, I'd say. About the same weight as those REI ones. That butterfly band, brand, whatever it is. I don't know what it's called. It's not a sort of a leech or something. Helix or something like that. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, nice chair. Not bad. And good, good customer service too, huh? Very, very fast. Like I said, it was Saturday that, that it broke. By Monday afternoon, I had a brand new one at the house. It's the first time that I've set it up. Works like a champ. Very pleased. Good job. So thanks a lot for the chairs. Yeah. There'll be a link below for the chairs and for the stoves. Both are working great. Of course, you can always go old school. <laughs> Get up, Charlie, and don't see that chair. <laughs> it's some old school right there. Unfortunately, it's not mobile. Well-rooted chair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Back in the 80s, we used to bring... This leads down to the lake. We used to go down there by those reeds and catch small bass and bluegill and small channel cat and bullheads. We'd bring them up here and release them in this pond where they were not really bothered too much. And uh, used to come up here and sit here 
and fish. That was an actual fishing chair in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> Worked quite well. Still working. I forgot to mention, check your history books. Daniel Boone once visited Southern California. This is where he sat. He sat right here, whittling. <laughs> Wearing his coon skin cap. <laughs> then later on, Grizzly Adams sat here. <laughs> and now Pharaoh. It is believed that Chuck Norris even sat in this chair at one time. He's probably going to cut this thing. <laughs> Chuck Norris. 